The NBBA thanks today's 2014 Texas Breeders Classic sponsors. Lucchese, luxury boots handmade since 1883. Free for ranch equipment, built by ranchers for ranchers. Hyo Silver, the official buckle makers of the NBBA. And the T Bucking Bull Dispersal Sale taking place in Fort Worth on June the 3rd. Jeff Bressler, Jerry Hargis, uh, along with uh, Marty Fouch. Marty Fouch, promoter, of course, of the uh, Texas Breeders Classic. And uh, Marty, I was talking to Jerry. This has been a great event because, I mean, a few of the top bulls are raise, rising to the top. But when we're looking at the majority of bulls here, they're in that 84, 85, 86 point range. So yes, good show going on here. Yeah, it looks like 87 and a half or so is going to be probably grabbing a check there at the end. So a lot of great bulls, a lot of great bulls. Yeah, absolutely. And Marty, speaking of uh, great bulls, a lot of the great bulls that are competing here uh, today came out of your sale, the Texas Breeder Classic uh, sale. And you had another very successful sale last night. Yes, sir. Yeah, we were, we were really excited with the bulls that we sold. And the way these bulls are performing today is excellent. Now, in terms of sales that you run, I think one of the most significant sales to take place over the last several years will be taking place June 3rd in Fort Worth, and that's a total dispersal of uh, Teague Buck and Bulls. Yes, sir. Yeah, some outstanding cattle that will be selling there that I think it's an opportunity of a lifetime on these next four sales that Tom's going to put together. So uh, a lot of great genetics that's been there for a while. Now, first of all, why why is Tom really wound down over the last few years, and what type of opportunities are there going to be in this sale? Yeah. On on the uh, June 3rd sale will be straight bulls, twos, threes, and fours. Uh, you know, with Mr. Teague, he's just, his company has gotten so huge. Uh, Tom's still going to be a part of the PBR and the ABBI, but, you know, great opportunity for people that are wanting to get into the bull business. They'll never have, a, you know, an opportunity to tap into these genetics. I'm a gangster, uh, deja blu. I mean, it goes on and on, the type of bulls that uh, Tom has produced that appeared in PBR, Jerry. Yeah, I tell you what, so many good bulls he's had over the years. Marty's done a great job of having his competition bulls raise up. Uh, so this is going to be a sale that a lot of people are going to be watching, and I guarantee there's going to be some good ones coming out of it. So once again, any info on that sale, uh, Marty, where can uh, folks go take can a look? can go to uh, Bar F Rodeo Genetics and uh, go to that website, and we'll have bulls up probably here within the next week. You can start seeing videos on those bulls. Now, we're not going to talk about the Texas Buck and Bull Classic because this event speaks for itself. Let me talk about another Marty Fouch project and that's at a bull pool. Yes, sir. I had the opportunity to train racehorses for 17 years, and I know the benefit, benefit of uh, equine therapy, and now, now it's really becoming more and more popular in the bull industry. Right. So why don't you tell us a little about the bull pool? Yeah, the bull pool, we're really excited about it. You, you know, we've, uh, it, it's something that, you know, well, you can see right here, it's, it's the only one that there is out there in the country as far as bovine swimming. Uh, something that we've wanted to do for the past six, seven years, uh, Mike Warren and I uh, have partnered together on this, and uh, I think it's going to be, you, you know, take bulls to the next level. Uh, there's a lot of bulls that get crippled, and this is going to get them right back. So in terms of injury, what type of injuries uh, would a bull get the most ther therapeutic value out of by going into the pool? You, you know, hawks, stifles, backs. Uh, it, there, there's a lot of rehab, but we're looking more at the conditioning. You know, if we can condition these bulls a lot better, these bulls are going to last longer. And for what bulls are bringing nowadays, Jerry, you know that the, the, these investors are looking for any edge that they can get. And with, with swimming, you, you know, in the racehorse business, that's a way to get them back right back on top. So, Marty, if somebody uh, wants to give you a bull for therapeutic purposes, what, t what type of program is usually worked out? How often do the bulls swim? Right now, we're in the early stages. You know, we're, on uh, a month, we're swimming bulls twice a week. And, and it's kind of like an athlete. They'll tell us how much they can take, how much we have to back off. So right now we're, we're exploring. It, you know, it is something that we're really, really excited about. So Marty, more info on the bull pool? Uh, go to bullpool.com. Yes, sir. Hi, right, Marty Fouch, once again, congratulations on a great sale last night, which shows that there's still a lot of legs in terms of people spending money on bulls. And, yes, sir. And just the quality of bulls you hear, have here at the Texas Breeders Classic. We look forward to the second half. Good deal. Thank you. All right, thank you.
Join Bucking Bowl TV for our next big event, the annual James Gang Buck Day and Barbecue, May 23rd and 24th live from the James Gang Ranch in Orchard, Texas. Bull Riding Classic, Futurity for Bulls eligible for the Million Dollar Bucking Bowl Championship, Yearlings being bucked for the first time, and a big sale. Check BuckingBullTV.com or ExclusiveGenetics.com for the schedule and broadcast time. Jeff Bressler, Jerry Hargis back at the Texas Breeders Classic, and it's been a great event so far, Jerry. We've gone through uh, half the bulls and uh, 90 bulls total bucking today, and if we see the same kind of action in the second half as we did in the first, this should be one of the more spectacular Texas Breeders Classics that's uh, gone down in its 13-year history. We're starting off with bull number 46. Go lightly, Baker, Hatchet, and Hurst's Bull 92. Coming up next. This is a bull here that we sold last year in the sale that came from a good friend of mine, Dylan Morrison, he raised. Bull can be really good. Doesn't have a very good day at all today, but uh, one of those bulls in the center, like I say, sold last year as a yearling bull. Uh, came back here this year. You know, has a terrible day, but that bull... You know, one of those that can be really good. I've seen some videos uh, that her showed me in the past, but definitely not going to want to even check here today. So that was bull number 
46 out of uh, 90. Waiting on a score there. Rodney Parrish and uh, Betty Abair's bull coming up next. RJP 21. RJP 21. 63 and three quarters. Rodney builds that Boudreaux dummy that uh, we use at some of the three year old events. He's done a really good job manufacturing that. Betty Abair, one of the more colorful characters in the buck and bull business is on owner. Miss Betty is, uh, we call her, out of Spicewood, Texas. So coming up next, RJP 21, Parrish and Abair. You know, another bull just goes straight down the pin, Jeff. You know, uh, yeah, these young bulls, you, we know they have it in them to be really good buckers. You know, they show up to town and uh, for whatever reason, you know, they, they decide that they're not going to do their deal today. And, you know, you may be sitting here wondering, why would you even pay entry fee on that bull? Well, you, you know at one time that bull was really good, just didn't have his day. So unlike baseball, where you can go in a game and bat three or four times, here you get one shot for only a handful of seconds. 73 points there, so you got to get it done. Dave Pruitt, Pruitt and Downer, Stormy Night. That's a nice bull here, 73 Stormy Night. Bulls right, right here is one that's already uh, has won some money, has yeah. done really good so far this year. Uh, you know, uh, David Pruitt, when he shows up, he, he spends a lot of time and money on these bulls. Does a really good job with them. That bull had some bend in his back right there. I'll yeah, tell you yeah, what, it, it shows you how much uh, ability these little calves have. You know, and finally gets into a nice little spin, but doesn't have just a ton of kick right there. I think he kind of wasted a little bit too much time uh, right here and, and being kind of flat to score really high, but we'll see how the judges like him. Again, talking 84. Again, talking about any bull, given bull on any given day. I, I thought that this Pruitt uh, entry in Stormy Night would uh, be one of those type of bulls that uh, could crack the leaderboard, but not to be today. 49 coming up next. Another David Pruitt owned bull. Pruitt and Donner do the math. 204. Next bull a buck. Once again, setting the standard. DH Cattle Company. Mo and Randy Bandy's Bandy Bad Boy, 90 points. Here he is. Hey, Hello, boy. Kind of got hung up coming out of there in the bucket shoot and really couldn't get away from it. Got himself hung up and uh, just couldn't ever get anything going. Right here, you can see he's bumping the gate post right here. Has a hard time getting himself out of that shoot and getting back going. So, off camera before after that interview with Marty Fouch, uh, Jerry Hargis always looking to promote himself, asking if there was any need for a lifeguard at the pool, but I think. Jerry, I know you try to make money anywhere, but that was, I was stretching it a little bit. A lifeguard at the bull pool. Better than doing Buck and Bull TV, perhaps? I don't know. <laughs> Do the math, 75 and a half. TD Cattle, Derek Cobb, Mystical coming up next. Bull 51-22, TD Cattle, Derek Cobb. I'll tell you what, Jeff, so far the second half has not been very no. good at all. Another bull that just kind of runs down the pin there. Uh, Derek, usually when he brings some bulls to town, he has some pretty good ones, but this one here doesn't do the deal for him. Jerry Hargis signing autographs here as we proceed. 
We're in an area. We have a nice. This is this is a nice setup for us. We got a real nice uh, broadcast table set up here, right in the grandstand. Brett Barrett always brings good bulls wherever uh, he goes. Brett Barrett, Barrett and uh, Wallagren, lock and loaded coming up next. Following this bull, bull by Scott Burleson. So uh, two uh, stock contractors coming up that always bring good stock with them wherever they go. So perhaps going to look at two good trips back to back here. This locked and loaded bull is one that, that can be really good, you know. Uh, and like you say, when you know, Brett does a great job of turdy bulls, that's kind of his click, you know, what he what he's really good at and has done had a ton of success, you know. Two years in a row, uh, he was a flank man behind the the ABBI World Champion Finals bull. Looks like he's coming in Man, he cannot get away from those panels. They kick the panel every single jump there. Man, you always uh, worry about a leg getting hung oh, up yeah. there, uh, man. Nice trip. That's a pretty nice little bull right there. What you'd expect out of a Burleson entry. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that's the bull they uh, bought out of the page sale uh, last year as a yearling. Uh, it's been really good for them so far. Bull kind of does a little bit of everything the judge is looking for. You know, he gets up in the front end of that buck. You know, he's got the kick and the back end, the speed, the intensity. He's pretty much got it all right there. So first bull in the second half here, that should be marked with a respectable score and certainly is respectable as he cracks, I figure, the top five with an 88-point score. So nice effort for Houdini Martini, 88 points. I think you mentioned earlier, I think you may be right. This may be one of the highest scoring Texas British Classics that we've seen. Johnson, Ramir, Kucherowski, Hale and the Janes Gang, Thumper Bumper coming up next. 23-10, another bull eligible for the Million Dollar Buck and Bull Championship. It's one of those uh, uh, pinball wizard cabs that has been really good right there, turning the back right there in the gate. Got a lot of speed and intensity Whoa. like a lot of them pinball wizard bulls. He just starts spinning, getting too close to the gate, kind of hits his horn on that other uh, shoot gate there. And, Sure enough, kind of throws the timing off and messes him up a little bit. Man, again, off to just a great start here. A little quick spinning. Pinball wizard and then just uh, lost his concentration as he came up on the shoot gate. As you could see, there's so many uh, buck and bulls we see nowadays with uh, 83. So many bulls we're starting to see now where uh, syndicates and major partnerships are being put together. Five owners on that bull. Dennis and Christine Peaverhouse uh, and the Janes Gang, Miss Kitty's Peacemaker coming up next. Nice bull, uh, it's also millage dollar eligible by the Peavy Houses. Nice effort here for the bull, Miss Kitty's Peacemaker. That bull flattens out towards the end a little bit. Starts off really strong right here. Got a lot of kick and whip and spin. I like those bulls that really have that whip and their, their tail end comes around. Then he just kind of starts to level out just a tad, you know, but still still bucking pretty good towards there at the end. Still going to see a good score here from Miss Kitty's Peacemaker. Waiting on the score. Eighty-six and a half points, so nice score for Miss Kitty's Peacemaker. Coming up next, see if uh, Martinez Buck and Bulls and uh, Chase Fouch can double it up. They had that really nice bull last year, Jerry Hargis. I'm here legally. Mm -hmm. That won the Texas Breeders Classic. 
Well, we talk about a bull that drifts right there. He starts out in front of the chute spinning. By the time he gets done, he's 100 foot across the arena right there, but, but bucking the whole entire time. Like I say, Chase has done a great job with these Martinez bulls. They've won a lot of money with the, in the charity system in the NBA. You know, Martinez, uh, you were in Hill, you never miss a meal, and Martinez catered the Calcutta last night. Man, that was the best Calcutta food I think I ever ate. Yeah, they do a fantastic job. Eighty-three and a half. Another Chase uh, Fouch entry coming up here, coupled with uh, Will Butler and A and W A twenty-one. The next bull of buck, Mandy's Bandy's bad boy. Ninety points, still your leader as we start moving along the second half of the Texas Breeders Classic, thirteenth annual edition. It's another Fred Robinson raised bull uh, in both. Both incentives here. Yeah, Jeff, to know that there's a free meal given out, and I'm not there. <laughs> and you're not there. I was worried about you. Once well, little bull just can't get it going, you know, tries real hard right there and falls down the back end. Really going to dock his points right there when those judges see those bulls fall down and, and takes him a second to get up. I thought perhaps in North Texas on your drive down here, there was like the world's largest electric train display or something. You had a way Calcutta food electric train display. Jerry Hargis bringing the family down here. Waiting on a score, we have another 64 and a half. One more shot uh, for Chase Fouch here as he uh, combines here with uh, Kevin Wallace with the bull uh, tell me when to go 216 Wallace Fouch entry you know Kevin Wallace has some really nice bulls right now that Chase is hauling on his trailer some of the bigger bulls are going with PBR and uh, Chase is doing a great job with them Was he finishes really yeah, strong. Finishes strong? You know, it just takes him just a little bit too long. You know, you tell him he wants to buck, but he's kind of just getting into one spot right there. Uh, it takes him just a second to really get into that spin, but then once he does, is a pretty nice little bull. Get ready for a treat, because coming up next, what many folks consider to be the best futurity bull in the world right now, and that's the DH Cattle Company Bay Farm 2103. As mentioned, this bull won $55,000, uh, ABBI yearling event uh, during the PBR last year. Just recently won $25,000 as the winner of National Buck and Bull Day. 90 and three quarter points he scored in Las Vegas. So the opportunity now to see what once again, many folks consider to be the best futurity bull pound for pound in the world right now. So right here is a Showtime calf out of a Hotel California daughter. So really uh, great breeding there, top and bottom. Kudos to uh, the Page family for naming this bull Buck Autism. Well, I don't know about you, Jeff. To me, that bull looks really full Yeah, right he does there. look full. I was going to mention uh, that. Looks like he's really kind of kept him, kept him down on the ground. You know, you usually we see that bull jump really high in the air. You know, he kind of... Misses his feet just a tad right there, but I don't know if uh, that that affected him any or not. But uh, to me, it just looks a little full today. He looks super full to the way we saw him last time in uh, Las Vegas, and just lacking the type of agility he had there. Yeah, that's a high flying bull. You see in the background, HD is helping him, but it <laughs> wasn't enough. He was trying to buck with him. HD's one of those guys. He was sure enough bucking the back there in the flank man's position 88 and a quarter which uh, seems like a you know a really respectable high score but not uh, of the caliber of what you would expect out of buck autism teenage cattle company coming right back with uh, spr cattle uh, bull 256 coming up next page 256 and 255 bull, uh, excuse me i thought it's kind of high you know that bull uh you know, he's, he had a few good jumps in there, but wasn't just really fantastic. I, I thought they might have gave that bull some extra points. 
And, you know, when you've won in the past, sometimes that can happen. You yeah. know, the judges kind of have an idea, hey, this is the, one of the better bulls going. They might give you a few extra points. Little bull trying so hard, he falls down and gets so high in the air, he can't catch his feet on the way down. And uh, Even D&H can have a little bit of an off day. Back-to-back uh, -back, uh, performances there, not normally up to snuff for what you see out of D&H stock. Wait on a score here. Seventy-three and a quarter. Tony Dowdy, A and W, Buckskin Frank coming up next. Should see a nice bowl here. Jerry Hargis, this bowl uh, currently is at the top of the UBBI standings for Futurity Bowls in 2014. famous Mickey Hayes enjoying the uh, action here along with his mustache they always travel together <laughs> we've never seen them apart I wonder okay. how many hours a day that ritual is to get that <laughs> thing get that just right waxed right yeah I wouldn't have the patience for that, or I'd only do half a side, and that would look kind of <laughs> stupid. I'd just give up after that. Talking to Jerry, uh, well, talk, talk here in a second. You know, several of these bulls kind of having a little trouble keeping their feet. You know, he slides just enough to kind of throw him off. Right there, you can see that outside foot on that spin. You know, as he's trying to push off and go hard, he slides a little bit and uh, cause him to shoot forward, and then there at the end, you see him fall down completely. Yeah, I was mentioning uh, during our, one of our breaks there, I, I was just talking to Jerry Halpain, and uh, he was just, even though he's lost the lead to Mandy, uh, Bandy's bad boy, uh, his bull thunderstruck, Jerry really happy with uh, what he's seen today and the future of that bull for the remainder of his uh, futurity season. 85 and three quarters. Tom Peterson, uh, double entries here. H. Roll Royce coming up first. It's a nice pull here for uh, Tom Peterson and uh, his trainer, Laramie Wilson. This bull's been as marked as high as 86 and a quarter in the past. Uh, so here's a bull that, that could get up there in that. Like we've seen a lot of those 86 and a half point scores. Not sure if that's going to be enough to, to stay in one of those positions to earn him a paycheck today. But Tom's sitting right in front of us. See his reaction as his bull H. Roll Royce bucks. At Laramie Wilson just does a tremendous job doing all the training for Tom Peterson back at his ranch. Man, Laramie almost got cream too. Little bull almost kicked his head off there. But like That's say, sure. Laramie. He's a fast man, Laramie. <laughs> That little bull right there knows what to do. He's just a little sluggish about doing yeah. it, you know. Just sort of knows what he does and goes through the motions. And right. Just kind of does his deal and click dummy off. Okay, let's go to the back pins. And just doesn't have that intensity, you know. It's like you mentioned earlier, that's one of the categories that judges look at is intensity. And unless the bull has that intensity, you know, it's really hard to, to get a high score. Got five categories each judge marks each one of those categories five points apiece so they've got each one can judge for 25 points 84 and a half 28 top card coming up next another tom peterson entry
And again, starting to see a bunch of those, these bulls in the second half here in that 85, 86 point range. Just a lot of really, as we mentioned and all along here, a lot of really nice bulls here, Jerry Hargis. Uh, we've seen a couple of bulls just run off and get into some trouble, but normally at these kind of futurities, you also see your fair share of bulls in the 70s and lower 80s, and we're just seeing a good consistent group of bulls scoring in that uh, 84, 85, 86 point range. Yeah, definitely, as we just One other one there that just, uh, you know, first of all, he slid, you know, lost his feet, and then just doesn't have that intensity to back it up. So he's not going to score very good right there. You know, but as you mentioned, you know, we just took a look at the top five leaderboard, and it took an 88 just to get in the top five, and that's pretty unreal. You know, uh, most of these events you'll come to, if you score an 88, you, you might be winning it. And uh, or, or for not being for sure. tired for the second or third place, but uh, 88 in the top five. Seventy-eight and a quarter, as I just mentioned, haven't seen many of the bulls in that range. So there's one in that seventy-eight point range. Larry Barker out of Las Cruces, New Mexico's entry coming up next. Uh, Barker Bulls 215, BB 215 Pet. Larry Barker, if I'm not mistaken, won the uh, CBR Small Bull Team event a few weeks back. A lot of bulls getting it. <laughs> Just getting in the wrong direction. He's scattering across the pen pretty fast right there. Larry Barker, big uh, onion farmer in New Mexico, the Onion King. Not here today, perhaps watching over Buck and Bull TV. I think he did. He did win the small uh, bull uh, in CBR a few weeks back, correct? B uh, Barker Andrus team. Todd Bush coming up next. The bull Casper won uh, RJP 19. The Rodney Parish raised bull right here. RJ, anytime you see an RJP, is come from Rodney Parish down here in Evant, Texas. is Todd's second or third bull to buck today. Here we go. A lot of try there. Yeah, he takes a little spill, that first jump or two out of there, and uh, just can't get anything going after that happened to him. You'll see that a lot of times in these young bulls, you know. Another entry for Flying D coming up next. John and Mary Lawless partnering with uh, Paul Daniel Flying D on uh, Hell Yeah, another uh, nice bull from the Flying D Ranch in Chico, Texas. Yeah, this 208 Y, he's been really good in the past. We've seen him win some money. It's been really good for uh, the Flying D. So Paul Daniel entry coming up next here. See Paul working that uh, flank end of the bull there. Getting that uh, dummy all set. A couple of Paul's great futurity bulls. Crazy uh, mother trucker. Uh, going to burger bulls from what I understand. Sold a couple. 
Yeah, Chad Burke got a hold of two of his better bulls that are four-year-olds this year and already doing really good at the ABBI Classics. I think Mike White actually hauling those yeah, bulls right. for Chad Berger. As you'll watch him, you, you might wonder why he's pulling back on the dome. He's trying to get those bulls set just right in the chute. Uh, Paul's one of those guys, he likes his bulls kind of wadded up in the back end. So then when they throw that gate, I mean, he's springing out of there. If they're wadded up in the front end, they're probably going to hit their hips coming out. It's not going to be a good situation as you look at the top five leaderboard there. Man took that big kick, then got a little bit out of sorts after that. Yeah, this bull we've seen uh, has, has can be really good, you know. Uh, but And he has a lot of kick coming out of there. It just takes him about three jumps to turn back. And uh, usually a futurity that's a little too far to be judged, uh, marked really high. While we wait on the score, maybe we could flash up that leaderboard uh, one more time. I was trying to get to that as uh, we had the graphic up to show you who the top five are as we go to bull number 67. So it's Bandy's bad boy, 90 points. Uh, Jerry Hargis, 121. Mike Ross and uh, Chase Fouch, 89. Buck Autism, Dean H. Cattle Company, 88 and a quarter. Thunderstruck, uh, owned by the Halpains, 88. And Houdini Martini, 88 points. Houdini Martini, that Scott Burleson bull we just saw a little bit, bit ago. Another, talking about Jerry Halpain, Jerry Halpain and uh, Marty Kilgore, double dose coming up next. Both of these guys from up around the Tulsa area, and both of them have had, had a lot of good bulls in the past and, and do a great job of raising training these young bulls. Why, hell yeah. The uh, flying D entry, 85 points. Little boy had a ton of kick, just didn't get the spin to follow up with him. Hmm. Great kick. Watch second go round to that replay. Can Scott Burleson uh, crack the top five with uh, two bulls today? Houdini Martini with that 88 getting in the top five. Now Scott Burleson has case closed, 207 case closed. Interesting story behind this bull. You know, he uh, they used to be partners uh, with some other people on this, and I think they had a little case on it, you know. Uh, but anyways, this has been a really good bull, 207. You know, he's won some money, done good. Uh, a bull that I look here to, to probably score pretty high. So second and final Scott Burleson entry of the Texas Breeders Classic. This is bull 68 out of 90. So still got uh, a ways to go before we determine who the winner of the 2014 Texas Breeders Classic is. Acting Bucking up her. just a little bit in the bucket sheet here. What's that? Acting up just a little bit in the bucket yeah. sheet right here. Takes a couple of steps out and gets into a nice pattern. Yeah, it takes me a little too far to get, get going into it. Once he gets in that spin, you know, a nice little calf. And usually we said calf do that a little bit closer, and they decided to go out there a little further and. Now, a lot of times when you're analyzing uh, bulls on Buck and Bull TV, Jerry, I mean, obviously the optimum thing you want is the bull to stay as close to the shoot as possible and get in his pattern and do his uh, thing. But there's many times uh, I, I notice when you're analyzing bulls, if they take a couple of steps out, you find that to be kind of advantageous also. Yeah, you know, especially down the road when these bulls get to be uh, where they're having a rider on them. You know, if those bulls are have some really big, strong jumps out there a couple, 
it'll really loosen them guys up before they turn back. But, uh, you know, sometimes as a fraternity judge, these guys want to see them turn back right there in the gate. And so if there are a few out there, you know, uh, they don't get as high a score sometimes. But when they're really jumping and kicking and bucking across there, I like to see those bulls go out one or two and turn back. 84 and a quarter. 84 and a quarter. Pruitt uh, Bulls coming up next. David Pruitt along with uh, Brett Barrett. Barrett and Pruitt. Bar Blackhawk squawking. 212 Bar Blackhawk squawking up next. Glad to see that bull not limping. Yeah, out. That's, that's, that's pretty for sure. tough hanging his leg there in the out gate. I was holding my breath on that one. Uh. Just a little bull, you know, jumps, kicks across there, makes a tight little circle. And you can tell right here, he, looking like he really wants to get into a spin by the time he gets to the out gate. But like I said, uh, hangs the leg right there. And just a good deal to get out of there injury free. Another uh, Barrett and 76 and three quarters. Barrett and Pruitt coming right back with Apache Firewater, number 213, Bull 213. 70th Bull LeBuck. Looking through the stats, this is before the event started. This is one of the better Bulls. Uh, he's scored 87 and a quarter, which, like we're saying, uh, usually at this event, an 87 and a quarter is going to be a top three score. But here, I mean, it's going to take an 88, maybe even to get a check or, or in that top 10. And so we'll see how he lives up to his past performances. So final entry for David Pruitt this uh, afternoon. I tell you what, David Pruitt usually shows up and has some really good bulls. But today, he just kind of had one an off day, too. That bull pretty much runs down the pin, not very good at all today. You know, it's got to have Brett Barrett scratching his head. Next bull we're going to see come out of the uh, shoots is uh, Dick Dial and Catherine Dial on bull, along with the Janes Gang Candy Cartel. It's a bull that could certainly crack the top uh, five Santa Carrillo Cartel. This bull won $25,000 in Las Vegas at the Exclusive Genetics Champions Tour finale during the Academy of Country Music. Yeah, that bull's really impressive out there, Jeff. We saw him come out of there and really get to bucking. Uh, fell down right at the whistle there, but it was early enough that the judge was still uh, able to mark him high. Candy Cartel. You don't know, it was pretty good once he gets into a spin, but just takes him a tad bit too long to get into that spin. You know, he kind of just jumping around, and, and once he finally gets it on, when this bull turns back, man, I really like how much whip and spin intensity he's got. Really a bucky little calf right there, just didn't have his best day today. Should have another one of those uh, reasonable good scores that we've been seeing all day today, but as Jerry Hargis is alluding to, not the best we've seen out of Candy Cartel for sure. So Gene Baker, he broke one of our microphones, now he's after the TV. Now he distracted me. What was the, now Gene Baker standing in front of the camera. What was that score? <laughs> 87 and a half. Nice score, 87 really and a half score. points for Candy Cartel. That just goes to show you the potential this bull has. I mean, he had nowhere near his best trip and still 87 and a half. I mean, that's a bull that could get up there in that 90. Let's see if uh, Matt Griffin can do well here with uh, his bull. Two Glocks and a Reason. Matt Griffin's rambling Burl Ranch out of Steamville, Texas. Matt had that nice bull, Handsome Jack, in a little earlier. I think that's actually a 2159 Wheel of Fortune, uh, Masio Moslinger calf. 
Oh, my mistake, uh, my mistake. Dennis Davis is flanking there. Yeah, that was Wheel of Fortune. Another real nice bull out of the Jane's Gang program that's million dollar buck and bull eligible. Seventy nine and three quarters for Wheel of Fortune. Now we go back to that bull I was just talking about, two glocks and a reason. Matt Griffin, Rambling Verl Ranch. Well, we're going to check here because uh, I'm working off a day sheet and Jerry's working off a day sheet that has a little bit of a different. All right, we're up to uh, 826. Derek Cobb and uh, Todd McClure. It's called Hemorrhoid. H I M hyphen A hyphen R O I D. Well, this bull certainly no pain in the back today. That's a pretty nice little bull, and he's uh, <laughs> he's bull. in both incentives. And that might be one of the better that, that, Robinson right. bull we've seen. I mean, so he could jump up there in the lead for that six thousand. Double incentive entered bull, and we're starting to run towards the end on incentive bulls. I think this uh, was the final uh, Fred Robinson incentive bull for the day. 85 points. And uh, Jerry, on your sheet, I think we have 272 next. Yeah, Terrell Sullivan Bowl. Terrell Sullivan Bowl. Speaking of incentives, uh, just unofficially, uh, that last bull was tied for first in the uh, Robinson uh, fraternity incentive. there incentive. And however they're going to split that up, it was 6,000 for first, uh, 4,000 for second. So they might just split those two split bulls, at the 10,000 between the those middle. two. So. Two holes being paid there in the Mississippi flash bonus for Fred Robinson sold bulls in a Texas Breeders Classic sale as yearlings. You know, Terrell Sullivan's done a good job of raising bulls for a lot of years. You know, this bull today doesn't have his trip, but uh, you know that bull's probably got some really good bloodlines, and, and on a normal day, I'm sure that calf's a lot better. Terrell Sullivan going to be coming right back with 251, I think. Unless Jerry has something, we have two. We're working off of two different day sheets here, so I'm going to trust you, Jerry, because it seems like you're going in the right direction here. This should be uh, Sullivan's next bull, 251, like you mentioned. And I think Terry Sons is. Confused now too. The announcer here. Yeah, We're just trying so. to double, just trying to double right, check here. All right. We're moving all the way down to a Stephen Gunn bull uh, named Recon 21 Recon Stephen Gunn. If you took a uh, copy of the day sheet, uh, printed that off the uh, NBBA website. This is bull number 86. Add a sequence. Once again, we're going to be down at the Jane's Gang Ranch in Orchard, Texas on Memorial Day weekend. Two big days of bull action, buck and bull action, uh, Friday evening. We're going to be seeing a uh, classic event out at the ranch Saturday, uh, bucking a bunch of yearling bulls for the first time, as well as an underdog event for bulls that have never scored above an 84, as well as champions class caliber bulls. Please check Buck and Bull TV for the exact times of broadcast. Jane's Gang Ranch annual Memorial Day weekend, Buck Day and Barbecue. Next broadcast on Buck and Bull TV.
good looking little young bull just falls down out there and after that you know happens just really throws him off his game can't get anything going so uh Stephen Gunn today just have to kind of look his wounds and go back home and try for another day. Moving over to the left side. Wait to see what bull's coming up next. Have a score and recon momentarily. 62 and three quarters. Now we're, we're now I'm waiting on Terry. No, we're at 76, 251, 76. Now Terry's getting me confused. He's confused. What a great voice, though, Terry Sorens has. Well, made amends for uh, the last uh, Terrell Sullivan effort, so 50-50 here today. That was a nice little boy. Uh, kind of fakes the left, goes her back around the right, but, you know, has some kick and, and gets up in the front end a little bit. Pretty good bull. Should be a good, solid score. Now we finally get to Matt Griffin's bull. 83 and three quarters going back to uh, Matt Griffin, Ramblin' Burl Ranch, two Glocks and a Reason. Certain people you just don't question why Matt Griffin would name a bull two Glocks and a Reason. I'm not gonna ask him. Equivalent of not ask, I asked Hayden, Hayden Shaw walked by here and he had some big uh, black uh, electrical tape on his shirt. And I said, what's that all about? And he said, don't ask. And with Hayden Shaw, I'm not even going to question the reasoning behind that, but I won't ask. Matt Griffin, one of those guys that just has a lot of fun in the uh, industry. Built, built his own arena, from what I understand, Stephenville, Texas. So uh, Buck and Bulls at his own ranch now. Used to haul him over to Gilbert Carrillo's to Buck. Big stout bull right there. Gets out there a little too far. Uh, comes around, doesn't really get, really snap into spin, but he's got a lot of kick there, but uh, you know, he's just gonna need to turn back closer to score really high. Matt not super happy, but you see Matt Griffin up behind the shoots there. Score of 79. 79. I think Matt likes this event because they don't have that rule in place where you have to wear a long sleeve uh, shirt with you know, a collar. Before the event, uh, Glenn Carlton came up to him and said, hey, we've got a dress code here. Well, I don't know what they got worked out, but I know Matt's still well, wearing his camo so they, shorts they, they, and they, flip-flops. They so. caught that. Bloodline blocking stocks, blurred line coming up next. Big kick coming out. Second bull out today called blurred lines, the same name. Uh, you know, kind of good bull. You know, he goes through the motions pretty well, but uh, it just doesn't have that speed and intensity that we want to see. And then kind of towards the end, he kind of just, you know, fades out there a little bit and uh, kind of gets out of the spin right here. So judge is probably definitely going to dock him pretty hard. Eighty-one and a half points, the score there. Coming up next, son of Houdini, Captain Who. Will Butler Bull, 220, Captain Who coming up next.
so far hasn't been quite as impressive as the first uh, half of Bulls, but we've still got three Bulls here that have cracked the top ten in the second half. But I'll tell you what, after that first half, I, mean, I thought we was really going to see something special here today. That's that's what I was figuring. Well, we did see something special as one bull already has cracked 90 points and Bandy's uh, bad boy, d &H Cattle Company, mowing Rusty Bandy. Lightening out at the end, showed a little form to get things started in his trip. It's kind of the same thing again. The bull just kind of going through the motions, uh, not really excited about, about what he's doing. And then there at the end, just kind of takes a couple jumps out of the spin and, and uh, almost kind of quits the ship right there. Marty Fouch uh, and Jeff Ott, their bull eight coming up next. One of two remaining bulls with the Texas Bucking Bull Classic incentive, $10,000 incentive. $5,000 for the top Texas Breeders Classic sale bull that was sold as a yearling last year. Nice bull. It's a pretty nice bull right there. You know, he's got the... The kick that I like seeing, is, he's got a little speed to him right there. Really good built bull. See the bar F on the side raised by Marty Fouch there. That's just a good looking bull, yeah. Jeff. I mean, you see every little muscle in him. See the replay here. You know this bull is turning back right there. He's kicking over his head. Pretty good solid bull. 86 points, nice score for Bull 6. Chase Fouch, Mike Warren, 228460 two coming up next. 28460, Warren and Fouch. We've seen two 87 and a quarters for the uh, TBC incentive, so it's still going to take a pretty good bull to, to get a check in that, that category as well. Getting ready to come out at a Buck and Bull TV shoot. 28460, Warren and Fouch. Mm. My bull really gets in there. It's got a lot of action and everything. It just doesn't really get into a tight spin. Uh, but it would be interesting to see how the judges mark this bull right here. Another bull there with a whole lot of tools that just didn't really get it put all together by getting into a consistent pattern. As we went on the score there, Bar 260, Kevin Wallace, Chase Fouch coming up next. Eighty and a quarter, we suspect the score was on uh, 28460. Here it is, 80 and a quarter. I think that little turbo calf right there. He kind of gets uh, really far out to the Reno and then gets into a kind of flat spin. So not going to be a, a score high enough to get him up there uh, to the pay one deal today. But uh, coming up is going to be some back-to-back -back bulls. Uh, Jerry Hargis for Lendl Hurst, Hurst Rodeo Ranch. Lendl Hurst has been to uh, all 13. Texas Breeders Classics. Had a bull entered uh, in each one of the uh, 13. Obviously, Lindell, one of the most successful breeders, not only of futurity bulls, but also of uh, cowboy bulls, bull riding bulls. Yeah, Lindell's one of those guys that's been doing these competitions since the beginning of them. You know, he was at the very first uh, Buckers Invitational that Bob Thomas did. 
and uh, has been been through the competition system ever since. Never won a Texas Breeders Classic, but uh, won the Texas Breeders Classic incentive part portion back in 2009. So back to backs for Lyndall Hurst coming up. The bull had a lot of kick coming out of there. Uh, just wish he would have stayed stayed on a, a tight spin right there uh, to follow up with that really good kick right there, and it kind of just. Gets in a kind of a spin, but not just a really tight spin, doesn't stay with it. You know, makes only about one rounder out there. So in that category of spin, you know, he's, he's going to lose a few valuable points there. Another Lindell Hurst bull coming up next. I think it's 299, 84 and three quarters. I don't think Lendl is with us this year, though. He's had bulls entered in all 13. Looks like Mike Rawson doing the flanking for him today. You know, Lendl kind of having a bad day. Two bulls that, uh, you know, have some buck to them and show some potential and, and show some things that they need to do, but uh, neither one of them just really did anything to grab the judge's attention. So sand running out in the hourglass for anybody to try to take the lead away from uh, Bandy's bad boy with that 90 point score as we have one, two, three, four, six bowls remaining to conclude the uh, Texas Breeders Classic 2014 edition. Eighty-four points. O one Cattle Company Barthold Z three coming up next. O one Cattle Z three. Next bowl of buck out of the Buck and Bull TV shoot. We talk about kick right there. That bull kicked as probably as hard as anything. If he hadn't fell down, I think that bull would have been really good. As soon as he gets back up and gets a, gets himself kind of lined back out, he gets into a really nice spin. Uh, J.D. Dunn's been doing a great job of racing some really good bulls here in the last few years. Has won a lot of money in the maturity system. And uh, they, this bull's going to be really good down the road. Just kind of had a bad day and fell. Mm. Win on the score for Z3. Eighty-three, considering that bull took a stumble there. A respectable score. Von Guitar, Carpenter and Von Guitar at Happy, Happy, Happy coming up next. Bull number eighty-five. If you haven't had the opportunity to see the entire Bre Texas Breeders Classic, that's why oh, it takes a stumble. Yeah, another bull that falls down right there doesn't give himself a chance. You know, that's that's tough as when you're an owner watching as we see a lady, one of the owners watching it right in front of us. You know, you can just hear that big sigh, you know, and yeah. frustration when that bull falls down right there. It's mentioned uh, later on today either uh, this evening or early tomorrow. The archive version of Texas Breeders Classic uh, will be up for you to watch for a replay. And sometime Monday, probably Monday evening, Tuesday morning, we'll have the short go show, which will give you about a five minute recap of uh, the goings on here at the Texas Breeders Classic. Give you the opportunity to see the top five bulls buck. 63 and a quarter. 
Next bull up is uh, Jerry Halpane and Wendell Sanders. Bull Southpaw. Southpaw coming up next. Four bulls remaining. Halpane owned bull. Of course, Jerry Halpane's nice bull Thunderstruck currently sitting in second place behind Bandy's bad boy. It's an 88 point score. Going out and doing his thing. That's a nice little bull right there, Jeff. That, that bull could get in there in the top ten. Uh, gets out there and gets a really nice spin. Got some speed and got some kick right there. Pretty nice little bull for uh, the Halpane family. Sort of low there into a sense of mediocrity over the last several bulls. This yeah. one's woken us up here in the broadcast booth. She said potential to break the top ten for certain. And sometimes you'll see that with the judging too. When you know when you're watching and. 10 or 15 bulls in a row, they're not that good, and one jumps out there. You know, he looks so much better that he might get scored higher than he usually would. 86 and a quarter for that bull southpaw. Gene Baker on bull coming up next. Arnie along with uh, McVack bulls and KB buck and bulls. Seen this bull buck a few times in the past. Yeah, this bull's been a few events so far. Uh, you know, a bull that Gene, Gene raised, uh, Gene Baker there. So you can guarantee if he comes from here, he's got somewhere Houdini in him. Yeah, a pretty good bull. He gets that spin right there. He kicks straight over his head, and then that, that dirt gives away just a tad. We've seen so many times today that, that just a little bit is all it takes to kind of throw him off the game a little bit. And uh, as he has this big jump and kick right here, you can see he uh, slides just a tad bit right there and, and cause him to really uh, get across there and move in that spin. But uh, once he gets into it, the bull really bucks. We'll have to see if uh, going out there across is going to hurt that bull scoring him. So waiting on a score for Arnie. 82 and a half points. 82 and a half. Down to the final two bulls, both uh, Kevin Wallace own. This one is can't get right, 0631. His name fit him today. He just couldn't, no, get, it couldn't right. get it right. He just didn't, couldn't really figure out which way you want to go. You know, he tries both ways and. Uh, just kind of slow about, about both ways and just kind of goes across the pin and gets in a flat spin right there. So not a good score today from Kevin Wallace's bull. So we're going to be coming up in our final bull. Bull has to score above a 90 to leap out to first place ahead of Bandy's bad boy. It's also the final bull in the Final uh, bull in the incentive. The incentive. Yeah. So uh, he's going to have to score 87 and a half to, to win that event. Tyler Grimsley's done a good job for us today, pulling bulls out of the arena. 66 and a quarter points. And the final bull of the day, Kevin Wallace's uh, ET uh, 235. We'll take just a quick break after this bull, Jeff, and then if you'll stay with us and come back, we'll uh, hopefully recap the scores and tell you an unofficial winner. You know, a great safety man is a man that, uh, you know, you hardly notice, not meaning that he's not a, he's a great safety man. You hardly know, and he gets the job done and gets those bulls out of the arena quickly when there's a little problem. So you see one of the best safety men in the business working here. Well, Jerry, unless you surmise that that bull scored above a 90, and I know you're an intelligent enough commentator not to surmise that, it's going to be all Bandy's bad boy, DNH Cattle Company, 
Moe and Rusty Bandy winning the 2014 edition of the Texas Breeders Classic just as we watch the final bullet of the day, ET 235 bucking. So we're going to take a uh, quick break here as we watch a final replay of ET-235. You're watching the 13th annual edition of the NBBA Texas Breeders Classic from Glen Rose, Texas. Back with the unofficial final results after these words from some of our great Buck and Bull TV sponsors. You can own a bucking bull. No truck, no trailer, no ranch necessary. We do all the work while you have all the fun. Own an exclusive genetic million dollar bucking bull and take the journey of a lifetime competing for close to $2 million in payouts. Compete in events just open to million dollar bulls. Compete for payouts that continue to be the highest in bucking bull history. Compete at premier events like the Academy of Country Music and the National Finals Rodeo. Join exclusive genetics customers from 41 states and 5 countries for the thrill of a lifetime by owning a bucking bull. Learn more about exclusive genetics at exclusivegenetics.com. Welcome to our 52,272,000 square foot nutrition center the home of the checkerboard. 1,200 acres of working farmland where we serve 3,000 animals every day to make each one the best they can be. It's more than a nutrition center. It's a 1,200 acre foundation for integrity, innovation, performance, and quality. The proof is in the numbers. Over 20,000 studies and more than 100 patents to perfect taste, nutrition, digestion, and performance. That's over 85 years of continuous learning, and it won't stop anytime soon. More than 100 employees in the pursuit of animal excellence year-round. We stand proudly with the checkerboard. It represents the 100 million animals we feed every day, and the reason we never stop striving to deliver what they need to grow and thrive, to produce and win. The proof is in the numbers, and it begins here, with us. 1,200 acres, nine squares, one commitment. Look for the checkerboard. It's the only check you need. Join Bucking Bull TV for our next big event, the annual Jane's Gang Buck Day and Barbecue, May 23rd and 24th live from the Jane's Gang Ranch in Orchard, Texas. Bull Riding Classic, Futurity for bulls eligible for the Million Dollar Bucking Bull Championship. Yearlings being bucked for the first time and a big sale. Check BuckingBullTV.com or ExclusiveGenetics.com for the schedule and broadcast time. Jeff Ressler back with Jerry Hargis at the Somerville Expo Center in Glen Rose, Texas. Just concluded the 13th annual Texas Breeders Classic. Let's take a quick look at the uh, top five. Jerry Hargis winning today. DNH Cattle Company, Mo and Randy Bandy's Bandy's Bad Boy, 90 points. Mike Ross and Chase Fouch, 121, 89 points. 2103, Buck Autism, DNH Cattle Company, Bay Farms, 88 and a quarter. 272, Thunderstruck, Aaron and Jerry Halpain, 88, along with uh, Scott Burleson's Houdini Martini, 88 points. Been a great day here at the uh, Texas Breeders Classic, and I think both of us have really been impressed with the caliber bulls that performed today. 
Yeah, they're really good, Jeff. I tell you, anytime you have to get an 88 just to top the, uh, the top five, you know, that's a really good day of bucking bulls. Some really high scores, good from top to bottom. We saw good bulls. And again, for the most part, there's a couple of lulls in the uh, action in the uh, second half after we went past the 45th bull. But for the most part, we just saw some great bucking bull action with the majority of the bulls that did not make it into the top 10 still competing in that uh, 85, 86 uh, point range. Yeah, definitely. You know, even the incentive bulls, you know, it took 87 a quarter to win that event a well. So, uh, like you say, top to bottom, just a good set of bulls today. So we've had a great uh, Texas Buck and Bull Classic here. We're going to be coming back to you next time on Buck and Bull TV, May 23rd and 24th. Two days of action from the James Gang Ranch in Orchard, Texas. Saturday, uh, Friday evening, May the 23rd, you're going to have the opportunity to see uh, some great classic bulls uh, compete with bull riders. And uh, on Saturday... A uh, big day for uh, the Janes gang out at their ranches. We're going to see a lot of the million-dollar buck and bull futurity yearlings. These bulls are going to be eligible for the 2015 million-dollar buck and bull championship. Buck for the first time, along with an underdog competition. That's always entertaining. Bulls that have never scored above an 84, as uh, well as a uh, competition for champions class uh, caliber bulls. So you'll see some of the best uh, exclusive genetic James Gang bulls in action there. So until uh, Memorial Day weekend, Jeff Ressler on behalf of my broadcast partner, Jerry Hargis wishing you a great day from Glen Rose, Texas.